how's everybody doing? Watch me fix my OBS setup real quick. How's it going? Yeah. Hey, Dom. Can y'all hear me? Uh, if you can't, please let me know. Um, where'd my music track go? What's going on here? Sorry about that. It's because I closed Spotify. All right. First stream of the year, in case you can't tell. In case you can't tell. Um, yeah, so today it's more about just getting back on the horse in terms of streaming. Um, I have been absent from Mixer for a couple months. Um, got a new job, got married, got a new setup at home for my live stream. So I'm now, that's what I was doing before I started the stream. I was getting my, uh, getting all of my audio stuff configured. I had to refer to my own blog post again, so that was fun. But today, all I'm really gonna do, I'm just gonna do a little bit of work on my personal site because I have some things that I've been adding to the GitHub in the issues that I wanna just address. I'm actually gonna probably end up doing sort of a redesign, maybe with the help of our friend Ryan Warner. But I have, let's see, issues. Yeah, I have like 12 issues right now. All of them are, you know, relatively small things, but they sort of add up. And there's some things I want to do here, like add uh, references to my blog post footers. Hey, how's it going, Ryan Water? Hey, what's up, Tangent Pie? Um, yeah, so like the, I can show you real quick in my Notion. This is, I might not work on this today, but um, the way I keep references when I write articles is they sort of look like this inside of Notion. And I think that'd be pretty cool to have like that sort of style, maybe not this big or this much detail, but sort of at the footer of my articles so that people can reference the source material that I used to write them in the first place. Um, cool. All right, let me just get my Gatsby server going here. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's today. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to need, I'm probably going to talk to Dom. Uh, he, he seems to know about a lot about that these days. Um, and then I have like general styling stuff I want to do. And Ryan, you and I can talk about that at some point. Maybe you can come onto the stream some at some point and tell me about all the things that we could change and make it look better. Um, let me see this. Did I, I, I think I might've actually done this. So let me just double check. Um, where's that? That is yeah, the Gatsby cafe. It's been a while since I've been in this Gatsby co uh, code base, so it'll be fun getting used to it. Yeah. I'm glad you're into it. Yeah. Let's, we should definitely link up and talk about that. Um, your site looks a lot better than mine and I, I definitely want to do a lot more with it sort of in the vein of the whole like uh, digital garden idea. Um, so it looks like I've already done this actually. I had my old uh, position in here. So when I was sharing links with people, they're showing outdated information. So I'm just gonna close this uh, issue for now. We don't need that. Um, add footer. This I really need to do, but I don't think that's worth watching. Uh, 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 uh. You know what? The first thing I'm going to do just to get started, I know I need to do this. I'm going to update my uses page because right now it's not reflective of like all the things that I'm actually using, especially given the change to my, the recent changes to my setup. So let's see what I, let's see what I'm working with here. Yeah, so actually, like I said, I'm working on a new system right now. I guess it would be a 2019. Is there a 2020? Yeah, 16 inch 2020. Okay. There's like 2019. All 
I'm just doing this because it's a good way to get back in. Hey, what's up, Maxell? Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, we're just getting started here real quick. Uh, just updating a fun little page I have on my site. So I get, I get some questions every now and again about like what my setup is. So I sort of took this idea from my man, Wes Boss. Let's see. So I just had i9, 32 gigs of RAM, because that's what I need to run Docker. And I can't type. Okay, this, yeah, I just got a new Logitech Master 3 because the one that our old DevOps guy gave me sort of shat the bed. Okay, cool. Oh, right, what's up? It's you, Prince. Um, yeah, what? there's something else I wanted to add. Oh, yeah, I, I added this like... It's sort of like a peripheral, I guess. It's this thing that I bought. Yeah, being on a USB-C machine now means that I have one gigantic hub. Uh, which one is it? It's not that one. No, not that one, it'll be this one. Yeah, so I wanted these, a Vava, <laughs> whatever this is. Uh, and then what, else, what did I buy? Oh, I lately bought a Seagate, two terabyte. Um, yeah, oh, and then I actually up, I updated my I updated my webcam, that's what I did. What is this, the C922 Pro webcam, something like that. Cool. There's some other stuff I guess I could add here, but I'll do that later. Let's just get that commit going. Like I said before, let me know if the, the music levels are good. I just have the VU going, so I can't tell how loud it is for you, really, other than just guessing. Uh, so we'll just, I'm just doing this on master. I know we could create a branch. Dom, you hear zero music. Okay. What about now? Nothing, okay. Yeah, let's see. That's probably due to this. I had to set up this audio stuff again. Uh, where was it? I think it's in here. Yeah. What about now? Nice. Is it too loud? <laughs> All right, let me turn it down. How's that? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. All right, so I'm not going to push that because I don't want to trigger a build right now. Um, add fave icon. Yeah, our current one is the Gatsby logo. Whenever I share this with someone, it's the Gatsby logo. Pretty embarrassing. Uh, I haven't done this in so long, so I'm actually gonna Google this. Uh, I can't, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's just use my face. Mm. Yeah, Prince, I mean, it's a. Uh, Sunday night, right? What are we doing if we're not coding and throwing down? Throwing down in the club? Uh, if anybody knows a better way to do a fab icon, let me know. Because, as you can tell, I do not know. Well, well, first it probably needs to be cropped to a square. That would probably help. Um, trash.
Okay, yeah, I'll do that. For anybody watching, here's my not so hidden controls. The weird thing is it's hard, now it's like so low in my headphones, but it's all for you guys. Let's figure that out later. Okay, so I gotta crop this. Something like that. Why? Let's card that. All right. Now let's take this and try that. So now that's a square, it should actually work. Oh, nice uh, typos there, Dom. Now let's see if I can figure out how to load this. I'm gonna have to do some Googling about the configuration for Gatsby. It's been a while. All right, so yeah, that looks much better. I mean, it's still a picture of me, so take it or leave it, but I think for our purposes, that, that'll be fine. Uh, yeah. I know in the config, there's a way to do it. Oh, are you? Tom, you're gonna you're gonna go down in 60%. Uh, one of the guys on my team right now was asking about uh, suggested boards and kits for building a mechanical keyboard. And I was saying that when we have our team on site at some point this year, we should um, we should actually do like mechanical keyboard soldering sessions as for fun. Oh, thanks, Dallas. Thanks for the follow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So, Gatsby plugin manifest. Let's see, I wanna see what image I need to give this. If it's one image that it optimizes or if we need to give it multiple images from the same repo. Hey, Tells. Yeah, I still it, I still don't understand what all in the chat, like bit, like the, the mixer stuff compared to the Twitter stuff is a bit different, so. Provides configuration. Cool. Hmm. Oh, so I guess I could give it different icons based on what browser device oh thanks yeah actually what I need to do is uh, on one of my next streams I, I'm thinking of moving my stream date to Friday now that I work from home it'd be I can just end my day with a, a quick stream but I want to work on the last piece of the mixer bot for the for the party corgi discord um, I have three scripts written in a repo that is on GitHub right now, but what I want to do is essentially whenever somebody updates a streamer file, we're going to hit an endpoint that runs a script that updates all our subscriptions. Excuse me, and then all of those users get, we subscribe to webhooks based on their broadcast events, and then that should uh, basically take that payload and dump it out into a channel in Discord. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use one of these because it seems like this can optimize it for us. So that's small as hell. Android phone. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, thanks, Tals. Manual mode, you're responsible for defining the tire manifest. I think I wanna do the automatic mode, where I just give it the, I could probably give it the original JPEG. So if we call this that icon, the JPEG, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, cool. And then, Wow, there it is. 
There it is, everybody. My beautiful face. Okay, yeah. So that's why that's because we're using the Gatsby icon because I haven't changed it since I created this site. So um, what we'll do here is we'll actually give it the fab icon JPEG. This is probably one of those cases where I would imagine we need to stop this server. And what is it, Gatsby clean, that cleans the cache. Set that in the package JSON. Now start serve, but there's, does anybody remember what the command is for uh, cleaning your cache? Yeah, I used to just delete the cache file, but they added a, an actual CI, CI, yeah, here it is, Gatsby clean. So at the root, it'll wipe the cache directory. That's that's what's here, and that's what's being served for the, so to make the development experience faster. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna clean that out because we don't wanna use the cache. We wanna generate a new cache. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, gets me developed, I'll do that right here. Yeah, Talos, do you like it better than the, tw the Twitch chat? All right, Prince, thanks for swinging by. I'm, I'm not gonna be on too long. I'm probably gonna hang out until about seven my time, so that's about another 45 minutes, and then I'm also gonna do the same at dinner. Um, spent yesterday working on a bunch of, there's a bunch of stuff around the house, a bunch of stuff for the meetup, and um, actually solved a problem for work. I revised a post. I uh, got some great feedback from Ryan, Ryan Warner. Thank you, dude. Um, yeah, Talos, the, the new gig is going great, working from home. Um, I have a, a team of essentially three, including my manager, who is based in Oregon. And then my other two teammates are two guys that are based down in Brazil. So they start before I do, and my manager finishes after I do. So throughout the day, it's I have support if I need it. We have a stand up once daily and uh, it's pretty asynchronous, flexible in terms of like what hours I work. So, um, but I've been outfitting my home office. Okay, let's see if this works. Cool, there we go. We got a new fab icon, which is just my picture, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been working out of the home office towels, um, which has been great. I don't know if you can tell me or tell from what's what you can see behind me. I'm slowly starting to outfit this office I'll have a couch and that I ordered it should be arriving in the next week or two um, but I also worked out of a co-working space here in Philadelphia on Friday which was really fun and I think I'm, I'm planning on potentially working out of there more often maybe once or twice a week uh, they have a that cool community over there so so we got a new fab icon cool all right so that was an easy one I can actually delete all this. Cool. All right. So what else do I have in here? Yeah, this I'm going to talk about with um, inline code blocks. Yeah, this is... So basically, if we go to one of my blog posts, uh, yeah, so like... This is an inline code block generated from the MDX files that I use to write my blog posts. And so it's not being styled. And I think part of that is I'm essentially, it's been a while since I've been in here, but I'm using, oh, what do you, what do you want me to update? <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know if I told everybody, but this is, this is where it is. So I'm working at this this company now. It's called Fauna. We build uh, databases that are like intended for. Um, oh, where does it say that? Does it say that below my my stream? Oh, really? On on Mixer, it says that because I updated it earlier. I don't know why it still says that. Um, okay, cool. So what we have is. I'm essentially using two ways of styling here. Uh, theme UI, 
So this is my theme, which I'm using throughout to, for like consistent styles. And this is styling like a lot of my MDX pages. Oh yeah, towels. No, that's actually, <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because that is this issue right here. It's one of the first issues I created in this repo, but I hate writing about myself, so I have yet to do it. Um, I may even forego a, a formal about page at some point and just write like a quick little blurb when I go through and do some sort of redesign. All right, so if I remember correctly, what we got going on here is that this is all be being styled actually by our um, index, or I'm sorry, not by our, this is, the, this is the config file for the theme UI and that's what's styling our markdown files. Let's double check that. Yeah. Yep, so here's our blog post template. Article. I honestly forget where I configure that, but for as a proof of concept, what we can do is sort of, we'll just do this and we'll say, you know, in a blog post, a LI tag has a red background. Yeah, so this is what's going on. So essentially what we need to do, this is a, um, I'm assuming these are little code blocks here. So we have a style for the pre, which is I think what the Gatsby MDX spits out. Or maybe this is because it's styled by the Pragma, I forget, let's see. Yeah, so this is, um, what tool is that again? So I'm using this Prism JS. That's what's creating these cool formatted code blocks, but it seems to spit them out as pre tags. Whereas I'm going to go ahead and guess that these unstyled ones must be actually code blocks. Yeah, they are. So what we want to do is we want to give them sort of the same deal. Um, we want to give them a, back, a cool background. So the code block. Let's actually see what the color is here because I quite like this. RGB. All right, cool. So I want to see what this is in hex because I'm just going to use it for consistency. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do this better. Color.adobe.com. Oh, cool. Towels, are you going to are you going to be streaming all that? Yeah, so we got it. 42, 39, 52. Yeah, so this is whatever hex this is, wow. Okay, so we're gonna make the background that color. Sure, probably after I get something up, integrating a Netlify CMS source plugin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I have a, something I've been thinking about for a long time for this site is I want to build a, and I'm, I'm not sure if it would be officially a Gatsby theme or a Gatsby plugin, but anytime someone comes to the site, I want to, or the site um, gets loaded, I guess it would be on build. Basically, anytime someone comes to the site, I want to dynamically populate a banner that says whether or not I'm streaming. And if I am, just provide a link. Um, my real dream there would be actually to embed here um, above my blog post, the stream itself, so people can just watch it, but tis for another day. Okay, so this is a, yeah, so it's code. It should be a background. Why is it not liking this hex? 
if I do this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down to do that. I'm still learning um, a lot of the ins and outs of Fauna, especially the, we have what we call FQL, which is Fauna Query Language. Um, from what I understand, talking to our database engineers, the reason we can't use like a standard SQL or something like that is due to runtime, basically database stuff I fully don't understand. But yeah, everything in FQL is a function. So, um, you know, one of them is like, we have a, it's called paginate. And so paginate, like you can call paginate and then feed it in a set of arguments. So um, the one I like to test with is sometimes I'll feed it, uh, what we have are called collections inside of a database. And you can do paginate collections parentheses and it'll return to you a list of all of your um, collections in your database, which is pretty cool. But I plan on, I'm trying to figure out a cool, like non-trivial application that I could work on on the stream that is powered by Fauna, just so I can both sort of um, get the word out, but also at the same time, figure out some of it on my own in terms of how, because I've only used the, uh, I've only really used the FQL and our JavaScript driver when I was going through the interview process building the technical challenge. So I, I definitely have a lot to learn. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, I mean, I work with a lot of people who, most of our engineers work on the database side, so not a thousand percent sure exactly how they do what they do, but they're um, friendly enough to let me know. If I ask. Okay, so colors. Oh, that's right. I need to. Yeah, I, th I, th I know. So the person who referred me actually is an engineer here in Philadelphia, and he works on a lot of the FQL stuff and actually is now leading a team that's working on some, some of the drivers, like the SDKs and the various languages. And from what he told me, it sounds like um, they're doing sort of like a, I guess they're looking through it, trying to identify like what they can improve to make it easier for people to transition. So um, now I don't get why I'm not the best at CSS. Yeah, I mean, then I guess it's, it should be a string. like. A, Every time I write CSS, I feel like the dumbest person. So. Yeah, it's theme UI. Yeah, I'm using theme UI and emotion, but it's been like over two months since I've been in the repo for any extended amount of time. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what I did. Yeah, so they... Yeah, so this is where the code blocks are being generated. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm planning on doing a post, like I'm gonna have to read my own code. Um, but I'm planning on doing a post about why I did it this way. here I'm gonna have to look 
the theme UI docs. I'm like, this should, I would imagine that this should work, but let's see, blog posts. I don't think I have anything that's overriding that. So it's an article, the H1s have style, the code block gets all of our props. Let's see what's in the code block. Class name, style, something. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna log this out. Ah, I'm gonna have to. Where does that yellow one end? Did it pre, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Okay, background color, 2A, 2734. Yep, that's for the code block itself. Very exciting when you can't read your own code. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that these are getting rendered. Yeah, it's the, we're using the MDX tool that Chris built. It's not in there, it's not in there. So that's just creating our pages and our nodes. So yeah, I'm really surprised this isn't working. Oh, is it because, don't tell me it's because it's double quotes. No, I would not yet tell, so I'm, I'm excited to, put to hopefully beta test that. Um, I'm using his, what is it? Where, yeah, this Gatsby plugin MDX. This is what uh, creates all of this. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the plugin, the MDX plugin. Um, so all my, if you look at my blog posts, they're actually all MDX files. Pretty cool. Which is nice because I like uh, being able to just like drop components and stuff in there, or straight up HTML if I need to. see man that makes no sense so is the CSS that gets me so it doesn't look like we have any styles coming in here I'm just gonna try this. <laughs> this doesn't work, I'll actually look something up. EUI. Okay. I have that thing where like, when I type, I'm usually like really accurate, but then if anybody is watching me, it just goes, goes out the window. So we're using the JSX Pragma, we're bringing in JSX. We also have the CSS from theme in case we need it. So I'm thinking what we do is we, I think we can just pass the SX. Yeah, so theme UI, you can take, you can take values primary out of this array. So basically, I think what I could do is, if we have a component with the code block, I'll call it an SX, and I'll say the background. And 
then what I'll do here is I'll actually define a color. Instead of doing this, which does not seem to be working, I'm going to say, and that should match this, this color that we, we came up with in our color wheel based on the RGB. So what I'm doing here is I'm just converting RGB values into hex so that we can use them. Uh, so I'm gonna call it this. I'm gonna say that's our new, uh, let's call it code black because we may actually use a different color black. Uh, it should be a comma. And then in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the background is code black. So that should be that value. And it's still not doing it. So let's see what's going on here. So what happened last time? I didn't use theme for a minute and then I couldn't remember any of the things that I did. I'm just looking for some Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I always, this always confuses me when it's like two different, it's like the JavaScript syntax for CSS rules. I, for some reason that always gets me. Very strange. Cause that is a code block. So I think that theme It honestly should work here. I'm supply. I'm surprised it didn't just work here because if we do pre and we do like border one px solid red, all it's a string. Aha! Uh -huh. See that did not do anything to the pre, which are these guys right here. I don't even see the rule. This must have something to do with how the pragma is processing this. Language. Style tokens. See, what if we did here, like, background. Would this work? Ah, uh -huh, see, that works. So this is rendering the pre's, but I think Maybe we need, okay. Now I lost all my color. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. Is that what it is? Well, in this file, see this is doing the pre's and that's what creates this whole deal. But the, and this is done via the pragma, but I believe what's going on here is that components. 
Which file are you? Because I'm looking at this MDX provider. It gets the components, which are code block, or it's this. But here I have the pragma. Yeah, so this doesn't have the pragma, but it's because I'm just passing a direct inline style. And that, that's actually getting applied to these pre-blocks here, but it's these inline code blocks that don't be seen seem to be taking it. I have a feeling it has to do with the fact that this pragma setup is what's rendering the code blocks based on all the instructions I saw from Prism. But in terms of how... Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, because this spits out a pre, whereas these are code blocks. Oh, are you saying here, if I pass this in here, we need the prism? We need the pragma. Yeah, okay. So we take that. And then I guess because what's being passed down is we have our props. In our props, do we have an we have an SX here? But if we apply the SX to the pre, I wonder if this gets compiled down to a code block. See, I think this just processes these things. Yeah, see here, this prop, you're right, would go down a code block, and then that would, even if we passed it on into pre, like, I don't think it would actually style anything. So say I did this. You mean like this? Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm highly suspect. Code block, pre-block. Then I'm wondering where the hell this is coming into play. MDX provider, components. You mean here?
think it's that. I think it really has to do with Yeah, so we're passing these components into the MDX provider. And so the components are pre and props. So basically we're saying, I think that anytime we need to create a pre block or a code block that we essentially do what's going on here. So I think that this would override it, but like you said, the props are not coming in. MDX provider, okay. MDX provider is a React component that allows you to replace the rendering of tags in MDX content. It does this by providing a list of components via the context component that handles rendering the base tags. There are two special tags that can be replaced, inline code and wrapper. So you can say, hey, my H1, my paragraph, I have components, and anytime I see an H1, I want to render that. So what we're doing here is saying anytime we render a pre-block, we want to render this. Anytime we see a code block, we want to render this. So interesting. I'm thinking here what we need to do is log out our props. I wonder if we need to conditionally render this pre versus the um, code block. Uh, let's see you, Ryan. Thanks for thanks for popping in. This has been uneventful, but getting back on the saddle. So, yeah. So these are our props, just the language, essentially. Wonder if adding them directly to those in line rather than moving them to a const name. Are you talking about like taking this and dropping it right in here? Towels in the provider, sort of something like that. Let's see. Place them to their own const variable. Oh, I got you. You mean outside of the component? What's up, Robert? As in David, I believe is your real name. <laughs> See, my thing is, 
We get a code block. Weep said, hey, if we're gonna do Basically, our definition here is, hey, if we're MDX, if the MDX provider in, comes into contact with a pre, we want to render this code block, which then gets uh, taken care of by Prism. And that's, that's why all the pre blocks are now nicely styled. However, this code, I wonder what, it, like, if I just did this style background, let's just say it's red. Oh, it needs to be an object, that's right. Uh -huh. Still nothing. So I think it's, is that not rendering? Let's see. Oh, latest blog post, by the way, if anybody wants to figure out how to set up ESLint in Prettier, got a new blog post up. Um, Put it up today but i will be like blasting it out tomorrow and then hopefully on the i'll be doing some planning on doing some ci cd stuff in the future code blocks okay what if we just did something crazy here That's my blog index page. Where's my app? I wonder what would happen if I did in the layout. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm wondering if I just throw this rule into the CSS block that I use inside, where is it? Main container. That contains all of, it's everything that's not in the sidebar. So if I'm doing this right, I think it's, it might be something like this actually. So it's not right. Okay. What if I did something stupid? I'm gonna do something real stupid here. And by stupid, I mean, it's not even that dumb. I'm just gonna say all code blocks, background. Ew, why is this doing it? Yeah, convert indentation to spaces, thank you. And then two, oh, thank you. Background. Let's just do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, something's definitely up. So, background red. Uh, this, 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 into, ah, there we go. It's because I was punctuating it incorrectly. So we can get rid of this.
So my layout takes this main container. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. However, color that we created. Oh man, I need to write this down next time. <laughs> It is 42, 39, 52. Okay. So, towels. I think this is going to work. Sure does. However, it doesn't seem to be getting processed by the pragma, which it would be nice if we could get this same, like, syntax highlighting and language detection in our code blocks, why that's not happening. I really think it has to do with this. Yeah, I'm wondering why it is that, because I remember when I set this up, I was a bit confused about this part, to be honest with you. I don't think so, I think. So here, let's go to Prism. Because I believe that's, yeah. Prism React Render, that's what we want. So this is sort of where I got this from. Prism Theme, Prism Lib. What would happen? I wonder what would happen if I did this. Let's see what happens when I do this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Gonna do a Google search on this one. Gatsby config. Prism. Just no config. <laughs> Inline code blocks. In addition to fence code blocks, inline code blocks will be passed through Prism. If you set the inline code marker, then you can specify a format style. I can highlight. Hmm. This will be rendered in a code language CSS with just the syntax highlighted. 
Interesting. So this is like our default or like for our backup solution. I don't think that's the best one. I don't think we have any other config in here that has anything to do with that. So let's get rid of that. I don't think the code block is going to help us right now. So this is for a in text. to add too. box for I use box for my components now and don't get this issue so it's interesting uh, what's box I know a box like the Dropbox competitor but I don't think that's what you're talking about so this is really interesting why it's not processing it Proper way. Oh, import box from theme UI. For most of your CSS needs. What's crazy, what's really weird to me is that, where is it? Where we're defining these posts. That this is not working at all. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They sure are. Prism. Ed, syntax highlighting to your Gatsby blog in two minutes. Wow. Would have been nice. This lets you set up language aliases. For example, setting this will let you use the language SH, which will highlight. Okay, that's cool. Hmm, no inline highlight. Definitely want to make sure that's false. I don't, I hope it doesn't default to true, because that would not be great. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we're gonna do we're gonna do no inline highlight, and we want to make sure that this is false because we want this to be happening. False. Of course not. This clearly does not work. Go in here. Ah, interesting. So it has children, and that's it. Children.props, get token props, get. Hmm. Very interesting. One thing we might be able to do, at least here, is maybe show line numbers, which I think would be worthwhile. True. Can't spell. Ah, I think I was reading you actually have to style all these lines. Okay, I'll worry about that later. Boy, this is going very well. First stream in a while, in case anybody's joined who's wondering why this is happening. This is used to allow language, blah, 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 blah. Aliases, show line numbers, language extensions. Basically, Prism, JS, actually, because we're using Gatsby Remark Prism, that's, the issue's probably there. Uh, I think I think I just don't know enough about this component, or this uh, plugin, to be honest, because I still think that it has, the fact that we're only doing this as a pre for highlighting, but there's no place in the code base where we're doing anything with a code block other than other, like a code tag. So I'm wondering if there's some piece of configuration that I need to set up that's not working. So yeah, you add it there, right? Tra so it's in the transformer remark. Is that where it is here? Yep, so this is what transforms. to pass do I need to pass prism as a I wonder if this needs to go as a requirement for the plugins for the MDX maybe that's why it's not taking care of it doubtful if that's the case I would definitely have to restart this server I think 
so we'll do this. Just gonna try this one last thing before I call it quits for the day. Yeah, intermediate value not found. So because I can't figure this out right this second, I'm gonna use this cheat, because this seems to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna style it, everything, every code block that shows up in my main container, i.e. not the sidebar, we're gonna give it a style, and I'm gonna just give it that black background that it's like slightly off black, actually, um, that all of our other components have or I'm sorry, the pre, the pre blocks have. So now it should at least look like relatively similar. Um, but what I could do, maybe what I'll do is I'll set it to this. Yeah, 255, 204, 205, 255, 204, 153. So this is this color. And what we'll do is we'll set that. So now at least it'll look similar. This is a question I'm tell. So I'm definitely gonna, I think this is great question for Chris um, I'll, I'll probably sync up with him at some point I because I'm, I'm wondering if it has something to do with how the MDX is being parsed or if maybe I'm just doing something wrong with the Prisma or the Prism JS which is like very likely <laughs> this was hard like when I was setting this up I, I it was a bit harder than I thought it would be Yep, so we're back up and running. Cool, so now we have these, um, these actually look like a bit better. I, I would like to add a little bit of padding maybe to the code blocks. I don't wanna like change the formatting of the paragraphs too much, but even like four pixels there, I think that would make them a lot more readable. Um, towels if you're still with me what do you think my friend so I don't want to adjust the line the spacing between the lines so I'm not going to give them any vertical padding but I think maybe giving them like even even just like four pixels on the right and left to just to make it easier to read because I actually was reading one of my own articles the other day which is a interesting experience if you have not had to do that <laughs> Um, but I was reading my own article to try to figure out something I had done previously and when I came to these inline code comment or code blocks, I realized they weren't styled and it was none too happy about it. So I think that looks pretty cool. It actually sort of weirdly looks like it's no longer on the baseline with the rest of the paragraph, which is strange. I don't know if that's, maybe that's just how, like is this, what if it's just one rem? Nope. One rem, that's why. Yeah, okay, so what we wanna do is actually we wanna make the font size one rem as well because this will match the rest of the text in the paragraph. I don't want them to be like styled like complete. I just want them to be highlighted like this so that it's easier to read. 
So cool. I think what I will do is I'm going to commit that. It's a decent change, I guess. So I have all these logs and stuff I need to get rid of. So we can get rid of that. Yeah, Talos, I think uh, this is definitely a question I want to ask Chris. Um, I think we can revert this change actually that I made where I just abstracted this outside. I don't think that necessarily does anything. I don't think the scoping should matter. But here, I so I instantiate, I create a new variable, color variable that we'll be using once I figure out why this doesn't work right. And then here is the styles for all the code blocks. Like, Feels like they're almost bold. Guess not. Okay, cool. Right, get add all, get commit, style, inline code blocks. So I'm gonna push this, and this is gonna trigger a Netlify build. Um, if I had done it on its own branch, it would trigger a preview environment, which is a good practice if you're building actual products. But I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I just want to make sure the build goes out before I call it quits. But um, uh, there's my OBS in case you were wondering how I was, how I was doing all of this. Um, okay, so we don't need this. This is going to be a question for Chris. But I'm going to call this done because we, we've achieved our goal. Um, it, in my mind, is not the ideal solution, but I think we can definitely change that. Um, tag chips. Oh yeah, we can, maybe we can do this real quick too. So, one of the things I wanna do is on the blog page, all of my files that I create for my blog posts have tags in them. And so what I want to do is actually on the blog post page, I actually want to take these tags off of them too. And I want to render them on the page because I think, excuse me, it would help people that are reading the content know like which posts might be for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the graphical playground and I will take this query. This is the last thing I'm going to do because my wife is reminding me that I need to eat. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So I want to take all the tags. Yeah, let's see. By the way, this this graphical playground is great. Like you don't even need to think about writing GraphQL sometimes. There it is, tags. So all I need to do is add tags to the front matter. Yeah, that makes sense. I should have been able to do that without. Cool, so now we have tags. And if I come into, this is my blog post template page. So if I log this out, um, tags, and I just need to destructure them off of my props. Yeah, Talos, I really like this. I, I don't know if this was here when I first tried Gatsby a couple of years, maybe two years ago, maybe a year ago. I'm not sure when it was. But this wasn't here, the Explorer. Um, you still had all of this functionality, but it's it's really cool to be able to just click on stuff and also like to be able to do the filters without having to really be a sort of expert in terms of GraphQL. So here we're getting all of the nodes and what we should be getting is, we should be logging something out. Yeah, it, it definitely was like a later edition. It was not there originally. Undefined. So tags comes off this, pro oh, that's right. It's not a prop, I'm sorry. So actually what it is, is 
posts, and then each post will have a tag. Yeah, data, data.tags, I think. Data. It's not the site, it is the. We're gonna get rid of all this. Yeah, I think it's actually the node.frontmatter.tags, so it would be... Oh. Yeah, there we go. So now... These are each associated with each article. So what I sort of want to do is I want to take each of them and render them. So this is the description. So like if we did a div down here, or actually, you know what? Let's do an unordered list. I guess that's more semantic. Um, and then inside of here, we can just sort of iterate, say, Tags equals, and we'll take we'll take these off of the node, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to iterate through each of these. And for right now, I'll just I'll just do li real quick li. So these would be like dot map. And we could also do this elsewhere. Um, tag. And what we're going to do is we're going to return the li with the tag in it. Cool. So now all of the all of these now have their their associated tags. And actually, what I want to do is I want to do hash just because that's sort of like how tags are standardly formatted on on the internet. And then let's see, what do we want to do here? So we have the CSS from emotion. So that allows me to sort of write these types of blocks here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna add a CSS block directly here. Uh, say that it's CSS code. And then I'm gonna say uh, list style none. I think that's how it is, how it goes like that, right? Nope. Oh yeah, because this is CSS, so I actually, yeah, motion actually, it's cool. You get to write true CSS, which is great. Um, as opposed to like the JavaScript syntax of um, CSS rules. So what I mean there is this would be the, the CSS one. And then in like a JSX context, you would write something like this. And different tools use different syntaxes based on sort of like how they work. So um, I really like being able to write actual CSS. So we're gonna say this is a display flex. We're actually gonna make it a flex direction row because we want them to go horizontally. Cool. And then each of these things is also gonna get a CSS rule. And inside of there, we're gonna say, hey, we want um, there to be some spacing between everything because otherwise it's going to look really, really weird. So we'll do, um, let me just tech, check my theme. I forget if I did any spacing. I didn't. Yeah, in theme UI, it's cool. You can define spacing and stuff if you want to like set up vertical or horizontal rhythms that values, pixel values that you use throughout the application. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to say that we want to do a margin right of eight pixels. Cool. That's pretty good. So let's put it here. Ooh. Oh yeah, L, L, I, and U, L have all these crazy marks. So what I want to do is I actually want to take, 
I'm gonna take the margin off of this altogether. Cool. So that's that's better. We don't have that big gap, but we still have these LIs here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna say the margin should be none on the top, eight on the right, zero on the bottom, zero on the left, and we'll just use the shorthand rule. Cool. So now now they take up like better space. And actually, one of the things I want to do is I actually want the last child, I believe it is, or last uh, type. be I'm just testing this to be red yeah cool so so last of type it's the last li in this list and so for each of these you can see they're now highlighted in red which is good and the only reason I want to do that is because I basically want to I don't want them to have a margin of on the right because they're the last one so they don't need that so we're just gonna override that value here um, and so now all the other ones will have it yeah, see, these have it, this one doesn't. And also, I wonder if there's a way I can dash case this. Eh, there probably is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop logging stuff out that doesn't need to be logged out. Cool. Okay, and so now these are my tags. I sort of like that, to be honest. This P class, I think, needs a little less below it. Is that just being, oh, is that just, just inheriting browser styles? I don't like that at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say margin, bottom, just say something like eight picks. Actually, let's do 16 picks. Yeah. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say margin, bottom, we're gonna do 16 pixels. Now, a little less, not too much spacing like there was before. Um, uh, however, what I think I wanna do is I sorta of wanna move these. So this UL, what is it? Justify content. Yeah, I wanna do flex end. So, well, Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I just want to add a little bit more of a gap here. 20 pixels. And then maybe if I just make these italicize. I think that definitely helps. Um, maybe they need a font weight of bold, or what is it, strong? Tells, do you remember which is uh, more semantic? Is it strong or, I don't think it's B. I think the font weight is actually not even really properly used. I don't like that strong. Yeah, it is, okay, cool. I mean, eh, I don't really like this drama, to be honest. I think these just need like a different color. And one day what I'll do here is I'll actually make these um, links. And by links, I mean links to pages that render out articles associated with those tags. Hey, if two of us agree upon it, it must be correct. <laughs> cool. Actually, this is not gonna be italics. This is gonna get its own CSS rule. And that's gonna say margin right is gonna be like, 
got to be a little bit. Just to give it some spacing. I mean, come on. Come on with the spacing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's do 10 pecs. Too much. Let's do 6 pecs. Better. Cool. Let's call that that. <clears throat> All right, so we've added some tags here now, and I think we still have our, what's going on here? Aha. Uh -huh. So basically, this needs the same rule on this one. It's gonna be, actually, I'll just give it the same exact one. Cool. All right, so now we have some tags. At least people can see what they're what they're looking at. That's a good question, Tals. Yeah, I uh, I would love to get um, some time on the stream with Derek and talk about accessibility stuff. Like, I've done very little. I I went to a great talk by Chris Mars at Liberty JS a couple of years ago regarding um, what you can do just with Lighthouse and like using semantic tags and uh, the proper attributes on your elements and uh, color contrast. But the whole idea of like the screen reader and keyboard navigation and all, all those types of things are, are not something I'm super familiar with. So I, I'd love to learn more about it. Okay, so I, this issue I said tag chips. I'm actually not gonna do chips because I honestly don't really like how they're styled. So. You know what we can do here? We're actually gonna, I want them to be comma separated instead of margin separated. So I'm actually gonna take this style off altogether. And I'm gonna say, so we want the tag. We always want the tag. However, if the index is equal to the tags dot length minus one, as in if, if we're looking at the last item here, we don't want a comma, otherwise we do. So if we're looking at that, we're gonna do just empty string. Otherwise we're gonna do an, a string with a comma. So now, yeah. Oh, so it's not respecting the, the space. I get, I think that might be a JSX thing. See if I do this. So if it's the last one. Oh, it doesn't match the rest. Oh, so that was right. As you see, there's no comma. However, this, yeah, why is it not respecting my space? That's not nice. So what I'll do here is separator equals, and then we'll just do this. So if it's the last one, just that, otherwise we'll do this. JSX, gotta love it. What about just the space in your code? Yeah, it's adding the comment. It's just stripping away the 
the space because it's I think that this essentially renders as raw text. I mean, we could do something like span and then span, I guess, but this is probably gonna strip it away too, I would think. Yeah, totally. You'd have to do something like that. And then you'd have to do something like this. So if it's, if it's the last one, we just want this. Otherwise, we want. Yep. Did that work? It did not. That's not a surprise. Is that what it's called when it's like uh, greater than? Yeah, ASCII code. Is it? Is that what it is? What do you call it when it's like a like a greater than or greater than? Yeah, that's the one. So. Ah. Don't you like do this or some shit? Not the back ticks. This is fun. Isn't this what you logged on for, everybody? To watch this. I know, I know. I hate, I run into this all the time. There, there it is, <laughs> Talos, check this out. Look at this, just complete and utter. That's not good code, but whatever. We'll, we'll call, it, call it a day on that. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna commit all this stuff, I think, and then push it up and make sure it gets through. We have an LI which still has Styles on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, that's because I took all these styles on. So. So let's do a margin bottom. 
We're going to set it to zero. Cool. Now these are spaced properly. Let's say we cool. added tags to blog index. So now we're going to do a Netlify build here. If you haven't uh, checked out Netlify, I highly recommend it. It's super easy to work with. Like I got stuff spun up really quick and I'm definitely not the fastest in terms of that type of stuff. Yeah, so we got a build going here. Gonna do all its little dance and get us up and running. And then once that's the case, then we can call it an evening and get back to whatever we're doing on Sunday. Yeah, towels. So what's for dinner is pasta because it's we're feeling lazy. Um, my wife is gluten sensitive, so it's some lentil pasta, I believe. We have some fresh homemade pasta sauce that we made, which is essentially just crushed up tomatoes in a can that we heat up and throw in some rope like vegetables that we saute with some spices. So that'll be nice. And then tomorrow, tomorrow back to the grind and working on some stuff at Fauna, which is pretty interesting with a Oh, nice. Yeah, we're on the same page. That's Sunday schedule. Um, yeah, tomorrow we're... Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing some stuff at work that involves like a, a, an inline editor that we have a React um, package or NPM package that essentially like wraps it for, for using with React apps. But um, I'm still getting familiar with some of the hooks. I know the basic ones, but in my last gig we had a lot of components with lifecycle methods and I never really had the bandwidth to sort of do a deep dive. So that's actually something I'm thinking of doing in the future is actually doing somewhat of a deep dive on hooks and writing some articles, maybe even one article per hook with like a little demo or code snippet in it and explain like why you would want to use it and when you, you would want to use it. And then I will use that as my own reference because I will never remember what hook when. Let's see. I'm just going to my own stream just to see how many viewers we got here. Um, now we got one. I think Tals, I think you're the only one, man. You're the only one who made it to the end, so appreciate that. Okay, let's see how this build is going. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. It looks like it's about to finish up. Let's do it, Netlify. We're, we need that special Jason Langstor juice. With that extra beard power. It makes, makes the build go faster. Yeah, the first time I worked with Theme, I sort of like... I kept running into problems and then I started using theme and emotion and that's where I was running into the like, hey, am I using the CSS versus the uh, like sort of JSX syntax, I guess you'd say here, the, just the JavaScript syntax. Um, but I have, I have a reason why I'm using one versus the other and the whole idea here was, which is why I was surprised this whole code block thing didn't work was essentially the, I'm allowing theme UI to style all the pages that are created just from MDX files Whereas like my components, I'm actually going in and defining, as you see, like specific rules for specific things in terms of layout and style. But I was trying to like keep sort of like a universal style set for everything that's auto-generated and then things that are actually components I can control a little bit more granularly, so. Yeah, me too. Oh, I guess the mixer bot thought that was an inappropriate comment, Dallas. Still learning about. I don't know. I see it crossed out the most recent. Have I, I have gotten really I I've gotten really deep with theme UI, so I really want to know why your SX didn't work. Yeah, like me too. Okay, cool. Published. So this is our local host. Let's get rid of that. Who cares? Awesome. So it looks like our stuff's there. We got styled blocks. 
We got an updated fave icon. We got tags. Boom. Oh, uh, it's on my side. It's just it has a strike through. It says removed by catbot. So. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for today. So uh, thanks y'all for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm probably gonna start streaming. Like I said, I'm thinking maybe Friday nights would be the best. But uh, if anybody has any opinions, just let me know. Um, and I'm gonna sign off for the evening. So. Take it easy. Bye.